Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be checking out a kinetic energy, potential energy, and work problem, where we're looking at the energy initially in a system, and we'll be comparing it to how it's finally expressed, either in kinetic or potential energy. The problem begins with a bird that is gliding through the sky at a height of 500 meters, and it is going with 15 meters per second velocity. So if we just pause right there, guys, what we have in our early initial conditions is that a bird is cruising through the sky. And the bird is cruising through the sky at, at a given height and at a given velocity. And those are going to be important for us because they're going to express the amount of kinetic energy due to velocity that I have and also the amount of potential energy the bird has courtesy of height. The bird descends to a height of 300 meters. Now that's going to be important for us in the final part of the problem where we look at the final potential energy the bird has. So the bird actually descended and so therefore some of its potential energy that it had before is now going to be converted into kinetic energy as it descends from 500 to 300 meters. And the question is asking us what is the brand new speed of this bird? And that's going to come out of this variable right here. So that's kind of where the whole problem is driving. Everything is going towards that variable right there and solving it. You notice one thing the problem tells us here is that we are going to neglect air resistance. So air resistance is not going to be a factor for us today. That's what the last part of the problem is expressing to us. So where we see work here in the problem, work is not going to be a factor for us. So if we look over here. There's no work. And so there's no work either. So what we're going to do is actually cross off work. Okay, we're, definitely, we're not going to look at it right now because it's not a factor. So what we're simply going to do now is look at the amount of energy in the system initially with the kinetic energy. We're going to calculate it. We're also going to calculate the amount of potential energy that the bird has when it flies at 500 meters. Since there's no work, the amount of energy I have initially between my kinetic and my potential should be exactly the same amount of joules that I have at the very end, although it will be distributed a little differently at the end. As I descend down to 300 feet, I do lose some potential energy, but what I end up having is an increase in my kinetic energy. And most likely what you should see here is if kinetic energy is going to increase, then we should be looking at an increase in velocity. The final velocity should be something greater than 15 meters per second. All right, guys, so why don't you press pause, set the problem up, and solve for the velocity. One other thing here, you're going to notice the mass is not expressed. And actually, in these problems, the mass is not really important because it eventually it will cancel itself out. But anytime the mass is not expressed, feel free to substitute a 1 in for the mass. All right, guys, press pause and go to the work here. Once we set the problem up, what we end up having is 1 half times 1, I made 1 as the mass just for the sake of it, times 15 squared, plus the, plus the amount of joules we get out of potential energy, which is 1 times 9.8 times 500, which gave us 4,900. So the total amount of initial energy I have is 5,012.5 joules. All of that joules is now going to be converted into a combination of kinetic energy and potential energy. And what I end up finding is that I have 2,940 joules of potential energy at the height of 300 meters. Now we still need to isolate out and solve for our velocity. So I'm going to do a little bit of a algebra here and subtract, uh, and isolate my velocity. So bear in mind as the next calculation does come up, I am going to subtract out 2,940 from the right side or the final energy and subtract it from my 5012.5 joules as well. So let me do a little bit of math here. And I end up having now 2072.5 joules is going to equal 1 half mv squared. And in this case, because my mass is 1, it's going to be 0.5 v squared. So now I'm almost close enough to actually solve for the velocity. Let's do a little bit more factoring out of the problem. And what I end up solving is I have uh, 4,145 joules equals my velocity squared. And my last thing I'm going to do is take the square root of that number, and that will give me my pure velocity. So let's take the square root of 4145. And what we find out is that the bird's new velocity 
as expected, is a little bit faster. 64.4 meters per second. So that sounds like a reasonable number for us guys. If we're looking at, at what happened here, the bird initially was at 500 meters elevation. So it's 500 meters off the ground, going at a speed of 15 meters per second. The bird descended down to 300 meters and therefore would have lost 200 meters, three, 500 minus 300 is 200 meters worth of potential energy. Now the energy was not wasted, it didn't go into the air resistance, so then it must have been transferred totally into the kinetic energy. And as expected, all of that potential energy is now converted to kinetic energy and the result is I'm going 64 meters per second compared to the 15 meters per second the bird was originally going at 500 meters. Alright guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope it was helpful. Have a good night.